first off, 10 years ago, I was sitting exactly where you guys were, which is in Glass Hall, taking a marketing degree and deciding what I want to do with my life, all right? So, by a show of hands, who wants a job? Okay, by a show of hands, who wants to make a lot of money? The point of today is to help you understand what jobs are out there, what niche you might fight it, fit into, and how to actually make money in the digital marketing space, okay? I'm gonna give you guys my story um, that's just gonna kinda show you guys that the path to where you guys are right now versus where you know, Cody and I are, which is managing multiple six, seven-figure businesses, taking multiple exits. Um, I'm only 37, so it's not that long ago that I was sitting where you guys are trying to figure this thing out. We just so happened to um, you know, find our way into this niche of digital marketing. So I'm gonna give you, golly, I need to catch my breath. I'm out of shape, Cody. Sheesh, okay. So I graduated Missouri State in 2009. Facebook was not a paid platform. Google was not relevant at all for a small business. And the only real way to reach an actual household by zip code or geo was by direct mail or by what is called a door hanger. Does anyone know what a door hanger is? It's those things you hang on a doorknob, um, you, you know, in general, right? So my first company I started was a company called Door Deals. It was a 27 inch by seven inch door hanger. I put 20 businesses on that door hanger. I hung that door hanger on 10,000 houses. I charged businesses five cents a house. So that was $500 a month, 10,000 houses every single month. How do you think that I put 10,000 door hangers on 10,000 doors every single month. Well, at the time, I was trying to figure that out myself. What I ended up doing was is creating a fundraising model where I would meet the high school volleyball team in the parking lot of their high school, give them 10,000 hangers, they would go distribute the hangers, businesses would get results, um, they got a $1,000 check, 10, 10 cents a house, and that business was born. We got to about 40,000 houses in Springfield per month. Then, I ended up doing a door hanger for a fundraiser for a venture capitalist's daughter he said, hey, how can I put that thing in uh, was it, where was it, Iowa or something? I said, I know exactly how to do that. Let me go figure it out. I had no idea what I was going to do. So I went back to my office, figured it out, crunched some numbers, and, and created a franchise model. Then we were able to get to 22 markets, um, and I franchised that. And, then, and it was very successful. Then I go down the road in 2012, and all of a sudden, everything shifted in the marketing world. The idea of targeting a zip code with direct mail and print was no longer the only way to target specific areas of a, of a geography. Now, Facebook was a paid platform, and now Google was rolling out these different products that were able to target specific niches. So what happened was, as I said, okay, my print publication that I'm running that's a multi-million dollar company is struggling. I've got these franchisees that need to have another product, so that's how I started you know, into the digital marketing itself. So I basically said, okay, what is, what is, what is working right now? So I went to Google, and Google had some products that I rolled out. Then we went to Facebook and had some products that we rolled out. And then I, then I basically um, created digital products for my door deals franchisees. Well, it wasn't very long when I realized that a chiropractor, for instance, was able to you know, put a Facebook ad up and get 10 times the results as if I was gonna charge them the same amount of money to do a door hanger or a direct mail. So what happened was, is all of a sudden the return on investment for the digital product became so much better than my print. I knew that. Everyone knew that we were struggling on the print side, so we wrapped up our print publication, sold it to another company, and then focused only on digital. At that point, we grew to um, about 50 employees, but I had one fatal flaw. And these days, you need to understand one thing with digital marketing, in my opinion. Just like you have a brain surgeon that's gonna specialize in one particular part of, of the person's anatomy, digital marketing is becoming so important in the actual uh, business world that you need to niche down. So that's when I met my business partner, Cody, wherever he's at, he's a freaking monster. When he gets up and talks, you'll see how much of a monster he is. He had created a personal brand and was an influencer in the insurance space, had a huge conference. He's gonna tell you about it more here in a minute. And, I, and he was a client of mine at my digital ad agency. And I said, hey man, this market's changing. So what would happen is, is I would go in and I would pitch. And I would mostly win any, any conversation that I was getting into in a pitch. I was typically able to win that business unless I was pitching against an ad agency that was specialized in the niche that I was pitching to. So what I mean by that is, is if I was a general ad agency and I was pitching to an insurance company and the other ad agency that was pitching to that insurance company specialized in insurance, they would not only win, they would kick my butt. 
right? The reason they would kick my butt is because they knew the KPIs, the key performance indicators, they knew what strategies were working. They could get us, they, they could, a, a, an insurance niched agency could get so far ahead of some general practitioner that has the storage facility, the car lot, the chiropractor, the dentist, and everything in between. Because every time you pick up a new client, you gotta learn a new vertical. So there's one thing that I can give you guys advice on as you're starting to go down this sort of path of digital marketing, if you wanna get into that, is there's riches in the niches, guys. There's riches in the niches. You've gotta understand that in 2020, 55% of all media spend in the world is digital. Do you understand how many billions and billions and billions of dollars is digital marketing? So as a quick show of hands real quick, who has a marketing degree right now? Is everyone going for a marketing degree? Not has a marketing degree, going for a marketing degree. Is this mostly everyone marketing? Is there any finance guys? Any finance anything? Is this all marketing? Okay, finance, good, right? Because this doesn't just apply to marketing. So don't try and tune us out because what we're talking about today is mostly how does market apply to the business world? And so we're gonna go through each of the individual parts of an ad agency. So we have developed a nationwide agency, um, really very few of our customers, probably 1% of our actual customers are in Springfield, Missouri. Everything else is nationwide and even multinational. Cody did a conference call the other day with like 2,000 Filipinos um, that were t you know, pi piping in from the Philippines about learning how to do insurance because of our national brand. He's got the largest YouTube channel in the insurance space. Um, we have the largest independent conference. So every year, he's gonna tell more about this, but he'll have about 2,500 insurance agents that come down to Dallas, come hang out. We have you know, two days of actual intensive you know, marketing conversations along with just general insurance business type talk. And so we have, you know, he'll tell you more about it, but that's what, that's what we're doing. So we're niched down in the insurance space. But now that, I, just like I said, there's riches in the niches, Another thing that you guys need to understand, as you start going down this path to what is my career gonna look like in digital marketing or marketing in general, is I would say that you really have to decide there's one of two paths to go down, in my opinion. There's probably a third um, that I'm not gonna bring up that is a, is a smaller path. But as you're gonna need to choose if you're gonna go down what I would consider a corporate marketing path, which would be like going to Bass Pro or O'Reilly or some type of digital marketing department that you go and you become a part of that or you're gonna go into the small business, entrepreneurial, like ad agency type route, okay? So the difference between the two, and there's pros and cons to each one, right? The pros to the Bass Pro type model is that you kinda of come in, there's a guaranteed um, sort of starting salary. Sometimes it's you know, a little bit higher than what you can get with a smaller business, maybe a little bit higher than you can, than you can get with like maybe an ad agency per se, but you're kinda of stuck. You know, you're gonna hear from Toby, um, here in a little bit, he's our third keynote. He worked in Bass Pro for you know, several, several years in the marketing department. And I'll tell you that there's are great jobs. I love those guys. I know a lot of people in those departments, um, but there's, those kind of departments are sitting all across the country. And if you go down that corporate route, that is not a bad route to go. It's very safe. It's very convenient. You're just gonna be there for about 10 years before you can move up, if that makes sense. You're kind of on a track of depending, they have their path and their plan, they get so many applications that they're able to just kind of like put you in a place and then you're kind of going and playing that corporate game. On the entrepreneurial side, on the, what that looks like is that's when you start with like a, you know, a company that's less than 50 people. Maybe like the, a, a decent sized car lot is gonna need a, a digital marketer, you're gonna run their Facebook ads, you're gonna run their lead development for them. Or like for us, it's like an ad agency, we're looking for project managers, designers, salespeople, you know, whatever. We're gonna go through each of those different sort of slots today. But you really need to understand that you gotta choose one of those two paths typically. It's gonna be, do I want a corporate job and make a steady salary, potentially benefits, or do I wanna take a, 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 an entrepreneurial role with maybe less guaranteed in the upfront, but more upside, you know, times 10. Because if you can be the marketer that helps the business understand and you're the, you're the marketing department and you're the digital guy, if you can help, a lot of these business owners, they don't understand digital. They don't know what they're doing, they don't know why they're doing it, they don't know how they're doing it. So if y'all can understand how to generate a lead, how to follow up with that lead, how to close that lead, you become a very, 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 very important piece of that person's business. As opposed to Bass Pro, where you sit there and it's like, all right, I need you to manage the catalog for me. Um, good luck, you know what I'm saying? Like there's just a lot of stuff to do if that makes sense, right? So I wanna go through the four main components of digital marketing jobs that are out there. 
and I want you to kind of understand and I want you to start to identify. The whole point of this conference um, is to really help you understand what jobs are out there what, and what seat you might sit on on the bus because there's lots of different seats on this digital marketing train that's moving ever, ever so quickly. So when I'm bringing out these four components, you know, if you're part of a small business, you might have all four hats. If you're part of a big business, you might have one complete specialty, if that makes sense. So the first section is really just sales and customer acquisition. Okay, the idea of sales and customer acquisition as a job, as it relates to digital marketing, is very simple. That's what Cody and I do. We're the ones that are able to meet with the prospect, identify a potential budget, potentially take di different products that match that particular budget to then get into a, a particular goal that that client is looking to do. So let's just use an example of like a, a, an automotive shop, right? What are they trying to do with digital marketing? They're trying to get people to apply for financing to get financing with them for one of their vehicles or sell one of their vehicles, right? So you're basically the person that's understanding that sort of sales. So, so if I was selling digital marketing, okay, I would be meeting with the car lot, I would be understanding their goals, I would be understanding their budget, I would be setting particular expectations that they can reach with that budget, and I would then be managing that relationship. If you can handle that part, and you can manage the budget, and you can communicate with people, and you can sell, and you don't mind knocking on doors, you don't mind going cold calling, you don't mind just doing what it takes to get in front of the people, then sales is, is where you want to be. I would never do anything but sales, personally, because that's what I love to do so much more than everything else. I could do other things, but my skill set, I'm not detail-oriented. I'm not able to really um, like go through, like I'm gonna go through here in a minute other, these other jobs that I can't really do that well. Now, the second sort of area is not so much the um, sales and acquisition, but I would consider communication and customer, um, what I say, uh, communication and customer relationship. Now, what this means is, is, this is what Katie does for us as like a project manager, or Brooke, right? So. Um, you're, there's going to be a breakout later with project management. If what you can do well is communicate and be organized, um, you need to sit on that, on that customer service seat of the bus. Now, we call them project managers. That's typically what the indus industry is, is known as a project manager. A project manager is super important because if I'm a sales guy, I'm typically not that organized. I'm not that organized because my brain is built to just go find new business, go find new business, go find new business. A project manager is someone that does not want to sit there and try and close down business, they want to basically say, okay, now that you close the business, I want to communicate the details. We're going to move your website from here to here. There's going to need to be domain information. There's going to need to be, um, you know, all, all types of details that are going to basically allow that, that client to get what they want because there's a million things. Like, for instance, if you want to stand up a, a Facebook campaign, you've got to build an ad account. You've got to stand up ads. You've got to manage that ad spend. You've got to like there's so many detail oriented things that take place in a customer relationship and that's an extremely crucial role um, in the digital marketing world is the project management. The third thing that I would tell you that is, a, is an area of, of expertise and opportunity is strategy and analytics. This is probably the, one of the more important roles but also super difficult because you have to understand things such as Google Analytics. You've got to understand how to what do I do with this information? So if we end up, like as an example, let's just say we have a client that has a website and that website has general analytics going through it. We notice that the bounce rate, which is how many people went to the site and then left, is, is super high. Well, what does that mean? That means that there's not enough information on that, on that actual page because people aren't finding the value of that actual website and understanding what sort of analytics and KPIs are telling us what sort of direction to move because typically, in a, in a digital marketing uh, role, your boss or your client, the reason they're hiring you is because they don't understand how to read these analytics. They don't understand what that means. So you can get certified in Google Analytics. If you can start to understand, here's not only how to put analytics on your site, here's how to read Google AdWords, here's how to read the different KPIs of the click-through rates of all your different campaigns that you're doing, and make that information digestible for your boss or your client, that is super important. And there's also a lot of ideas that you can bring. Hey, because you have this, this, and this happening, you should probably be thinking about doing this, this, and this. Well, if you're the, if you're the person that's understand that's analytics and you're able to give that to the boss, you're giving real actionable items to that client or that boss that's able to then, you know, see value in the work that you're doing, if that makes sense. 
Then the fourth section is what I call project execution, okay? Project execution is really when it comes down to the individual actual product. So with our company, we do search engine optimization, we do website development, we do ad management, so every month we're managing a million dollars of Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Google. So we have engineers that actually run the campaigns in Google and Facebook. We have SEO experts that are able to understand the analytics and understand to make suggestions on what the content looks like. We have copywriters who are able to actually write the copy that the SEO content is, right? We have videographers, okay? So when it comes to project execution, that's when it's like, look, my passion is, is, is design. I love understanding a client's vision and I love taking that client's vision and putting it on paper and giving them something to see, right? That's what I mean by that. Or um, copywriting, let's say you love to write. Like one of our most talented individuals on our team right now graduated from Missouri State and literally she writes and manages subcontractors and we pump out 500 pages of content per month. She loves that. She doesn't want to do anything else other than that. She doesn't want to be on the customer acquisition side. She doesn't want to understand analytics. She doesn't want to do any of that. She wants to write because her passion is writing. So whether it's videography, graphic design, content creation, managing accounts, those, that's what I mean by project execution. How much time do I have, Brooke? Five minutes. So the way that this, ex the, the way that this is sort of broken down is very simple. I'm going to go to it from, from start to end for, uh, with those four roles. It starts with the guy that wants to, or the girl that wants to go sell the business, okay? That's where it starts. You gotta prospect, you gotta understand who has the budget, go set a meeting with those that have the budget and get them to spend that budget with you. Once that comes on the contract, that then goes into a project manager role. That project manager typically onboards the customer in relationship with the salesperson. So typically the person that sold it along with the project manager. That project manager, then has the strategy, the analytics, the, let's just say the client's budget's gonna be Google AdWords, Facebook advertising, and search engine optimization and web development. Let's just say they're spending 15 grand a month like some of our clients do. They're gonna do all those things, right? But our client isn't talking to the videographer, typically. Our client isn't talking to the web designer. Our client isn't typically talking to the SEO guy because that would be overwhelming for the client. They just want results. So the salesman and the project manager typically are the one that manages that relationship, and the salesman and the project manager then sort of have the individuals that execute the projects on that particular team. The whole goal, though, is for us to say, hello, Mr. Uh, Cody Askins, you are paying us $15,000 a month. When we first started talking about this, here's what you stated your goals were for $15,000 a month. Here's what we're doing to execute those goals for you. Here's the results of what we're doing. So every month we have what's called a strategy session, that strategy session gets out of the weeds a little bit and says, look, here's our scope of work. Here's what you said you wanted to do. Here's what we did. Here's the results. What do you want to do? Do you want to spend more money? Do you want to spend less money? Do you want to pivot budgets? Does that make sense, guys? So no matter where you start in one of those four, it doesn't mean that you have to end there. There's a lot of people that say, you know what? I think I want to, under I think I want to sit on this seat of the bus, or I think I want to sit on this seat of the bus. We have a lot of people on our staff that started as sales guys that didn't really want to put in the knocking on doors and going out and hustling and getting revenue, and they ended up being more of a tech individual, so we moved them over to an engineer. So don't get too paralyzed with what you want to do specifically. Now, if you're a graphic designer and you have that skill set, obviously you're probably going to be leaning into that and looking for graphic design jobs, but just try and get into the industry because I can tell you right now, when it comes to digital marketing and a marketing degree, you are extremely valuable to an employer if you understand the digital side because a majority of what's gonna be asked of you as a marketing manager is gonna be the digital component, honestly. Unless there's some business where you're gonna do something else, that's totally fine, but digital is probably gonna be a component of that. Even if you're gonna go run to trade shows or whatever that ends up being, there's still a digital component to the trade show execution, right? So I wanna give you a couple actionable steps that if you take me up on this, I can assure you, you will be more valuable and worth more money to your employer. Step one, okay, on your resume, get Google Analytics certified. It is free, okay? Go to Google Analytics, get certified, and there's several different certifications, right? If you're not techie, that's okay. Learn, I think, you know, Dr. Herman's had me do a statistics project one time where I lo logged into some platform that I didn't even understand, but you know what, I figured it out. We got it done. That's step one, analytics certified. Step two is, 
go to Google AdWords and get Google AdWords certified. Even if you don't ever plan to use it ever again. Okay, get Google AdWords certified. Now, there's like five or six different certifications you can get with AdWords. You can get display certified, all kinds of stuff, right? Google AdWords certification, Google Analytics certification. The third thing that you can do is go to Facebook and get Blueprint certified, okay? I think it costs like 150 bucks or something, but it is so worth your investment. I don't even care, borrow the money from your parents to get certified on Blueprint. Because if you show up to a marketing interview and you've got all the certifications for Google AdWords, all the certifications for Blueprint, all the certifications for analytics, and you can explain a little bit about what, how you want to apply that. I mean, how many interviews, Toby, have we taken where that's happened? I mean, zero? Zero, right? And if you did, it wouldn't even, there would be no interview anymore. It'd be like, oh, so you understand what we're trying to do here. Where do you, where do you fit on the bus, right? That's how important that stuff is. But a lot of people don't understand how important that component is, right? So. What I hope to accomplish today, guys, is over the next several hours, do not leave. Because one of the things that you guys have done is the first thing that it takes to be successful in the business world, which is you showed up. We had 150 registrations. 50 of you guys showed up. Okay? What's different about you 50 than the other 100? Okay, you got to ask yourself that question. You showed up. It's Friday morning. Some of you may be hungover or whatever, but you got out of bed and you ended up here to learn. Okay, that's the biggest step, showing up. You guys showed up, right? The second thing is, is start to identify where you think you might fit. We're gonna have a panel with individuals that are gonna be talking about their specific execution role, project manager, videography, et cetera. We're also gonna have breakouts after this that do not leave without going to a breakout, guys. I'm telling you right now, there's no opportunity like this right now where you can sit down and talk to people that are being paid to potentially do the job that you may wanna do in marketing or digital marketing. So. I think my time's up. I really appreciate you guys. I'm looking forward to the day. Let's have some fun.